Every year, millions of bars of olive oil soap are produced in factories. To meet this enormous demand, a large quantity of olive oil, caustic soda, and water is required. But how are over 50,000 soap bars made each day? We visited the soap factory to discover how one of the world's most popular soaps is made. Olive oil soap bars began to be marketed in the late 19th century, and advertising campaigns contributed to their popularity during the 20th century. Soap manufacturing underwent significant evolution with the incorporation of ingredients like glycerin and synthetic chemicals. These advancements enabled the mass production of various types and fragrances of soap. The process begins with the harvest of olives. The quality of olive oil largely depends on the quality of the harvested olives and the care taken in this process. Selecting the optimal harvest time and proper olive handling are crucial for obtaining high-quality oil with good flavor and aroma. Olive harvesting typically occurs in the fall. Specialized machinery is used for mechanical harvesting. Machines gently shake the trees to dislodge the olives, which fall onto a collection tarp. This prevents the olives from touching the ground and becoming soiled. After harvesting, the olives are inspected to remove impurities such as leaves, branches and stones that may have fallen along with them. The collected olives are weighed and recorded to keep precise track of the amount of fruit harvested. Next, they are transported from the field to the processing factory. Upon arrival at the factory, containers with the olives are unloaded in a designated reception area. Conveyor belts facilitate unloading and the movement of the olives to the processing area. The olives are then transferred to a section of the factory for washing and cleaning. This process is carried out using a special washing machine with a constant flow of water that submerges the olives. The olives go through an initial water wash to help remove surface dirt and other contaminants. The water used in this process is often recycled and purified to reduce water waste. After the washes, the olives are transported to a drying area. Here, excess water and moisture are removed from the olives to prevent unwanted water from entering the oil extraction process. Following the washing and cleaning process, the clean and dry olives are moved to the grinding section of the factory. The olives are fed into grinding machines used to crush the olives and separate the pulp, skin and pit. These mills use stone mills that crush the olives between two large circular stones. This technique is slower but can be considered a gentler extraction process that better preserves the flavor and quality of the oil. During the grinding process, temperature must be controlled to prevent excessive heating of the paste. Excessive heat could compromise the oil's quality. After grinding, the olive paste is sent to a centrifuge, which separates the oil from the rest of the paste. Using centrifugal force, the centrifuge divides the mixture into its components. Olive oil and water are separated from the solid part, which includes pulp and olive pit remnants. The centrifuge operates at high speed, causing the less dense olive oil to collect in a separate compartment. The olive oil is stored in stainless steel tanks to protect it from light and air, which can cause oxidation. Once the olive oil is stored, it is sent to the soap factory. The factory receives the olive oil, which is the main ingredient for making the soap. The first stage begins with the reception of essential ingredients, olive oil, caustic soda, and water. The olive oil is checked to ensure it meets the necessary quality standards. Factors such as freshness, acidity, purity and absence of impurities are examined. It all begins in a bubbling pot where vegetable fat reacts with sodium hydroxide, a caustic substance, to create soap. Sodium hydroxide is slowly poured into water. During this stage, the mixture generates heat and the temperature of the sodium hydroxide solution increases. The solution can reach relatively high temperatures, so caution and care are essential to avoid burns. The sodium hydroxide solution must be stirred with a stainless steel spoon to ensure complete dissolution of the sodium hydroxide in the water. This is done in a well-ventilated area to avoid inhaling toxic fumes. After preparing the sodium hydroxide solution, it is allowed to cool to room temperature before using it in the soap manufacturing process. Dissolved sodium hydroxide is highly alkaline and corrosive, so the preparation process must be carried out with protective equipment such as safety goggles and gloves. A worker pours the necessary amounts of olive oil and sodium hydroxide into the cooking kettle. 
the oil is heated, initiating the chemical saponification reaction, where the fatty acids in the oil react with the sodium hydroxide to form soap and glycerin. During this stage, continuous stirring is crucial to ensure that the sodium hydroxide is evenly mixed with the oil. The mixture is brought to a boil while being stirred for one whole day. The fatty acids in the oil react with the alkaline sodium hydroxide, producing a thick soap paste containing glycerin. Workers add more sodium hydroxide and cook the soap paste at 120 degrees Celsius for another day. Continuous stirring is crucial as it ensures even distribution of the sodium hydroxide throughout the oil, promoting proper saponification. Additives are then added to the soap mixture. Mixing is done with gentle stirring to ensure even distribution within the soap mass. The mixture is continuously stirred until it reaches a critical point called trace. Trace is a critical point in the soap manufacturing process where the soap paste has thickened and resembles cream. This is an indicator that the saponification reaction is taking place and the oil is turning into soap. Subsequently, the paste is washed with salted water two or three times. Each wash lasts half a day and this process removes impurities and glycerin, ensuring that the soap has high detergent power to remove grease stains from clothing. Throughout the day, workers repeatedly rinse the soap paste and let it rest for two days. They heat the paste for about 10 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius, just enough to pump it to a series of superheaters. The superheaters heat the paste to 100 degrees Celsius. When the liquid soap exits the final superheater, it passes through a nozzle that sprays it onto the walls of an atomizer. The atomizer cools the soap under a vacuum, solidifying it. Motorized blades scrape the dry soap from the atomizer's walls. The soap falls directly into an extrusion machine, which operates similarly to a pasta-making machine. The machine forces the soap through small round holes, while rotating blades cut it into noodles. As the soap noodles fall onto the conveyor belt, the head of the soap workshop assesses the quality by evaluating color, aroma and texture. Subsequently, the noodles are compressed into a homogeneous paste and a continuous long bar is extracted. An automated guillotine cuts the bar into the desired shape. The freshly cut soap bars are placed in drying and curing areas. During this period, which can last several months, the soap completes its saponification process and fully dries. Workers stack the soap bars in a cylindrical tower that allows sufficient airflow to cool them. They are left to dry for at least six weeks and even up to six months. The conveyor belt transports the bars to the stamping machine. Presses come into action to give them their final shape and stamp them. Mechanical arms suction the soap bars to remove them from the press. These mechanical pushers then push the soap bars out of the press and towards the suction arms. The soap bars travel to the packaging area where an operator cuts and seals the plastic wrapping in a single motion. Then the wrapped bars are loaded into a machine that places them in boxes. If you want to know how gold bars are made, watch the video on your screen and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.